Hi, my name is Stephanie Peloza, but I go by Steph Sanyadi online. You may have seen me on Instagram or YouTube. Throughout my YouTube career, I made a lot of transgender education content, including a very, very detailed documentation of my facial feminization surgery with Dr. Spiegel. I really wanted to make that resource for other trans people or really anybody going into a surgery like that so that they could know um, what they should prepare for and what to expect. And uh, that wasn't really something I could find when I was planning for my FFS. So I was hoping I could contribute to the wider net of resources and here we are seven years later. So I had a number of things done. I don't know if I can recall every single one because it's been a while, but I know I had uh, my forehead shaved, I believe was the term used, uh, kind of a restructuring of my forehead. I had a very prominent brow ridge. Um, I had a lip lift and a jaw reduction and reshaping as well. I had my Adam's apple uh, removed. Forgot all about that, forgot it existed, um, but that's gone. But I chose the Spiegel Center because I wanted to find a surgeon that would maintain my physical identity, maintain sort of my appearance while feminizing me, right? I was very particular that I wanted to reverse the effects that testosterone had on me during puberty and maintain, you know, my general sense of, of who I was physically, what I looked like. And looking through a variety of surgeons, Dr. Spiegel's work stood out to me as leaning into what the patient was looking for. And I knew I wanted a more natural result and he really delivered, he was very attentive and listened to everything that I was looking for. I very specifically didn't want my nose altered and he managed to do everything but maintain my nose and make it all flow together really well. So I'm very pleased. Feminization surgery changed my life in so many ways. Prior to facial feminization surgery, I lived every day really with a lot of anxiety and fear about what other people thought of me and not in a way that I was just self-conscious, but I was afraid for my safety as a trans person. Seven years ago, it could be dangerous and even today it can still be quite dangerous. And I saw facial feminization surgery as an avenue to living life with less barriers. After having the surgery, I definitely felt a lot more comfortable out in the world. But I also felt a lot more comfortable internally with how I saw myself being reflected in the mirror rather than just an image I was imagining in my head. And that led to um, you know, a really increased confidence. I was more interested and uh, keen to kind of go for the things that I wanted. And I felt a lot more at home and in the right place after FFS. Now, seven years later, what I didn't expect to happen was for my transness to really fade into the background um, because it used to be such a present thing that I was always thinking about, I was always aware of it. But having access to uh, gender-affirming healthcare has allowed me to go beyond just looking at my gender and looking at my gender presentation. And it's allowed me to actually look at what I want to do with my life as a whole. And that's really fantastic. And I really believe that gender-affirming care is absolutely key for trans people to live fulfilling lives. And that care can be you know, whatever it needs to be for them individually. Wanting to look into facial feminization surgery and take that step, take that journey, is to really think about it for a while in terms of what you want your results to be. I think often there can be a beauty standard set by popular media, set by influencers, set by fashion. There can be a standard that um, often I, I've, I see within the trans community kind of pressure to lean towards that. But I think it's really important to recognize that these Procedures are for you, not for anybody else, and not to meet a beauty standard that has nothing to do with you. They're for you to feel comfortable and at home in your body. So really make it about that, and not about what is the most beautiful thing right now considered by other people. It's what is the most beautiful thing for you considered by you. The most challenging part of my FFS journey was um, definitely was the physical recovery. For me, I had a very supportive family. My mom was there the whole time. The second I was out of the OR, she was with me as soon as she could. My brother flew in to see me, my dad was there. Um, but the physical recovery was very challenging. So on day three, my swelling hit its peak and I couldn't close my mouth. I couldn't like flex my lips. I had this big old something happening on over here where it had just, it was just, it was a bit of a mess. 
Um, it was all on track for recovery, but it was just, it was a lot to recover from with my jaw being reshaped so dramatically. And, you know, it, I wasn't scared, but I was, I, was, I was quite annoyed with my drool, <laughs> okay? So I would say the hardest part was really just managing my mouth area, honestly, as far as physical recovery goes. But I was very lucky to have a lot of support around me, especially when it came to post-op care with my mom. So I, I think I was lucky for that to be the worst part for me, the hardest part. I think what's been most rewarding has been the ability to sort of come full circle and, and be where I wanted to be when I was thinking about getting this surgery, which is, you know, to live a happy and calm and relaxed life um, where I'm not, you know, in fear of violence every day. And I can imagine a, a bright and hopeful and optimistic future for myself and I can live that. And I think that's a result of having access to gender affirming care like FFS, which was an enormous part of my transition. So absolutely the most rewarding thing was just having the, the healthcare. And, and, and what that means to me as a trans person is that I can live a fulfilling, healthy, normal life, um, which that's, that's all I wanted.